Hi, it's Tim from Toy Tinker Tim, and I'm going to see what I can do in this episode to repair and restore this vintage toy cardboard box packaging. Tabs on the box are torn, uh, a side flap has been folded over to the front of the box, almost like a cover. Uh, the packaging is separating where the two halves were originally glued together. Tons of scuffs, uh, dog-eared corners. So this particular box is over 45 years old and right now it looks more like something you'd be inclined to just pitch, just to throw it away. The top flap uh, near the window is barely hanging on anymore. Taking a look inside the box, uh, the plastic tray is pretty dirty and bent up. Uh, the yellow cardboard uh, insert, the backing, is in pretty good shape. However, a big issue is, is there's a top section here that held a pair of shorts and that's been torn off and is totally missing. So I'm going to be seeing about recreating a piece, a uh, cardboard section here to replace that. Taking a closer look at the felt marker spot, I can see under the marker someone wrote in pen, in ink, uh, 10 cents. So I'm guessing garage sale somewhere along the life uh, over the years for this. There is felt marker and pen marks. Um, I'm going to be seeing what I can do to remove or at least lighten these up. The plastic window on the box is very brittle and it's dirty. Uh, it's torn, it's cracked, it's dented, so I'll definitely just be replacing that. Not much left holding the halves together here that were once glued together. Uh, this should be a good project, yeah. It's, it's a nice challenge to see what we can come up with here in an end result. And um, these kind of repairs and steps and projects can be used for any toy packaging. So first I'm gonna tackle the marker and ink spot. I'm starting off with some Bestine solvent. In the past, it's proven to me to be pretty safe on uh, printed or colored packaging, and it, it evaporates pretty quickly. Uh, I tested some of it first here, though, on an end flap where there's some pink uh, printing at to make sure the color steadfast is there uh, before going any farther. The old tape, uh, unless it's already loose, is pretty well fused into the surface, so I don't want to tear it out.
I'm moving up to a little more of aggressive uh, material to work with here in the ink stains. I'm using some acetone. In this case, it's nail polish remover here. Uh, and this purple color of that does not uh, dry, uh, leaving a stain color. It, it dries clear. Um, if this paper had printing on it where I was using this, this would not be an option because this will bleach out or totally remove some of the printing on packaging. The two sections glued together that held this box are almost apart on their own, just from age. So I'm going to finish that job of separating these halves uh, so that I can work on the uh, creases, tears, and replacing the window on this box. With the packaging fully opened, I've got a good look at the plastic film, this window, and how it's been glued on. So I've carefully removed the packaging window to fully get to work on repairing the cardboard box and looking over the damage. To get started, I'll carefully do my best to flatten uh, creases and bends and folds in the cardboard. Uh, I put parchment paper over the cardboard uh, because I'm going to be using the clothes iron here on a wool setting with steam. Um, the wool setting is approximately 300 degrees Fahrenheit, 148 degrees Celsius. In the past, I had done something similar with using a cloth instead of parchment paper, but that cloth uh, kind of grabbed and stuck in to the cardboard. So after that, I've just switched to st strictly using the uh, parchment paper on there. So I'm keeping some pressure on that iron and uh, keeping a steady movement. Along with that steam, it gets pretty good results. Uh, and sometimes there's a need to just go back, repeat the steps in stubborn areas. Okay, now I'm just going to flip over the box, uh, this time keeping a sheet of parchment between the printed side of the box 
and the wood sheet that I'm using as a work surface. I have uh, multiple tears and rips on this box, most noticeably by the window area. Uh, the way I'm going to go about this repair is uh, by using a linen tape. Uh, it's an adhesive on a fabric linen backing instead of like uh, paper or plastic backing type tape. Uh, it's flexible, it stays flexible, and it doesn't get brittle over the years and uh, it's safe, it's archival quality. I'm trimming the strips uh, to place over the bad spots. Uh, then on the reverse, uh, any gaps that remain, I'm painting in with a real fine tip uh, paintbrush in uh, kind of a slightly diluted glue uh, to reinforce and firm up those joints uh, in there and uh, also I'm using a, a burnishing tool to flatten out those flared out tips where the rips and tears are in the cardboard uh, so it'll smoothen the edges and uh, just kind of reinforce that glued spots then to firm it up. Pretty much all over this box. I'm repeating this process uh, in the corners, dog ears, um, various other tears or spots where the cardboard is peeling up at. So now as the gluing is finishing off here, uh, we're going to let everything dry off real well. Uh, I want to bring some of the luster back to the age surface of this box. Um, it had what was a slight varnish coating to it, uh, meaning it had a little bit of a sheen there. So I'm going to be using this uh, spray finish here to kind of protect and restore, bring back a little bit of that look to it. Moving on to replacing the box window, uh, this original window is torn, it's dirty. It's uh, cracked, there's little gouges, like uh, bend push marks into it. And uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is make my measurements. Uh, I have acetate on hand from previous projects, but what you could do is just bring the material you're wanting to replace uh, to an art supply store and uh, check and compare that on thicknesses. Some of the packaging uh, is very thick, has very thick windows like the uh, pop vinyl figures. They have a real heavy plastic type windows to those, but this one's fairly thin and light, and so I'm set here with material to replace that. So instead of gluing the new window into place, I'm using double back adhesive tape. And I'll put the tape down first onto the cardboard and then lay the plastic film into place on top of that, starting at the top and slowly working my way down to the bottom edge of that film.
So instead of putting down a liquid glue, I'm using a spray adhesive to join the two surfaces to each other. Okay, these are the main parts that hold it all together. So I'm going to use uh, scrap paper to mask off the other areas that I don't want the glue on. With both the flaps now sprayed with the adhesive and uh, allowed to set for a couple minutes, it's ready to be put together. Uh, this way of gluing is pretty permanent and it is not very repositionable. So I'm going to take a little time to line this up the best I can uh, before both parts of this come into contact with each other. So I've gotten a good alignment and now I'll take a look and see how it's coming along so far. So the insert backer card has this piece missing. It's torn out uh, from the top center that originally held the shorts for this set into place. Uh, that piece is totally gone. So I've got to guess my way through it on what this piece would have been like and the shape and how it fit in there. For my replacement cardboard, I'm using a cereal box that's been doubled, uh, glued together with the spray adhesive to match the thickness of the original packaging. So I'm, I'm going to take my straight edge here and I'm going to trim the uh, torn edges of the cardboard to have a nice straight even edge uh, so I can work in my replacement section cleanly. So after trimming the jagged edges, I'm tracing the shape uh, to get a rough idea of what my replacement will be like. Getting a test fit on my replacement piece here and I've scanned the original cardboard piece and uh, printed out a swatch of yellow uh, to match that and I'm going to spray mount that onto my replacement cardboard piece. 
So I've attached my improvised part here in with the uh, linen tape, gluing in the seams like I did on the box repairs itself here. And then, you know, once with the shorts are in the place here, um, this mend will be hardly visible once it's all together in the box. So this real thin uh, plastic parts tray is crinkled and creased. It has some really thin parts too. Um, there's cracks and rips in there. So I, I hand washed it in some warm uh, soapy water to get off the heavy dust and dirt. I'm going to use this little heat tool. It's pretty much like a miniature heat gun. Uh, it's small, but it puts out some pretty intensive focused heat. I'm using it at a uh, distance with a scrap piece of cardboard under the edges of the plastic tray uh, to try and relax the warped plastic and to get it at least um, out of its inward bending sides. Uh, so heating it enough, warming it enough just to kind of relax that. So too much heat in one place is going to cause this to wrinkle and shrink up. Assembling all the pieces and elements back together to take a good look over here. Uh, it's still, you know, a very worn cardboard packaging uh, that's been in a played with condition. It wasn't a collector's item bought and put away somewhere. Uh, the ink marks on there are still a little bit there, and but it tells a history. 
I'm thinking possibly again it's passed hands through garage sales over the years. The spray coating over the box has kind of helped restore a little bit of the sheen. Uh, that spray coating is also going to protect those edges that have gotten frayed and creased to prevent more of the printing from flaking off, uh, getting rubbed off. bit of a split screen side by side comparison of uh, where we started and where I'm wrapping up here on this box. So the heavy folds are pretty well gone. Um, the crease lines in the labeling uh, didn't totally disappear with the heat treatment. Uh, but the cardstock itself, the bending and warping, have uh, been able to be minimized here. The wrap on this vintage cardboard box repair and restoration. Uh, I hope you were able to pick up some tips and ideas from this that you can use for your own collection, your own pieces there. Uh, be sure and hit the like if it was helpful. Uh, share it with your friends and fellow collectors and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet to uh, show your support and to help the Toy Tinker Tim channel grow here on YouTube. So thanks for watching.